Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of Anime on Draft. I am your host this week, Rolando, and here are my co hosts, Alec. Hello. And Drew. What's up? All right, this week we are going to talk about the Mission Brewing Shipwrecked Double Fucking IPA and Attack on Double Titan fucking. Episode 3, as well as Soccer Quest Episode 2. Um, so, to get us started off on this week's pairing, um, Drew, do you want to introduce the beer? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, like you said, it is a double IPA because a single IPA wasn't enough in this instance. Uh, I know in the <laughs> I know in the past I said I'm a big IPA guy, so I wanted to uh, I'm to kind of em- embellish that. And the, yeah, as Alex said, he he is not. But well, the benefit um, of this beer though is uh, we'll probably get really fucking drunk. Yeah. So the <laughs> um, the percentage of alcohol on my bottle it says nine point two five percent, and this is a beer. Uh, remember, so. Um, but yeah, double IPA uh, from Mission Brewery. Um, I can read a little bit about it. A style of beer, um, curiously born on the foggy shores of Father Junipero Serra's first founding mission. Our own vigorous entry is one rebellious IPA. Quick on the trigger and brimming with a bounty of hop integrity. And I can already smell it after I've poured it. There is a lot of hops in there. Uh, This is a big, bold, brazen beer. A restless vision of a new America. So... Think mm. think about that. Keep that in mind. <laughs> the bottle. The, I I picked this though because the bottle is kind of cool. It's it's real minimalistic style. There's a pirate on it. Um, I like One Piece, so you know, let's stick with the pirate theme. And uh, I like getting wrecked. So uh, is yours a kinda, pirate? Kinda Mine's like a skull it. and crossbones flag. Or yeah, it's, it's like, like a, a yeah. I think that's a what skull he means. head. Oh, it's okay. a pirate flag. A Jolly right, Roger, yeah. <laughs> if you will. Yeah, I um. Unfortunately, right, but, uh, I went to go buy a bomber of this at the store by me and apparently they don't i don't like ipas but i ended up with the most of this beer and i actually have a entire quart so i have 32 ounces of this wonderful mission ipa that i'm not going to be able to drink the whole thing of yeah i don't know how you did that i don't I know have a, i only they, have the the bomber they didn't have the bomber mm. at the store i went there and it was just this huge fucking can i'm like oh my god i'm gonna <laughs> if, die if they had that uh where i where i picked mine up i would have gotten that but uh Dude. you have to suffer with it i guess but yeah. uh, let's yeah. let's pour this guy out yeah mm-hmm. yeah like i said the the smell and the color is just wonderful it smells great it, smells it does so smell good, good. <laughs> IPA it's got is a lot of head good. retention as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, uh, it's really I, foamy yeah. too. It's like a really having to wait foamy for that thick to head. All right, let's take our first sip. Oh God! It smells great. Super, super mm. like fruity and floral. It's not. It's not as bitter as I thought it was going to be. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that, but it's still really bitter. <laughs> I mean, if uh, if they were going for orange peel, and I think they were going for orange peel, you can uh, definitely taste the orange peel in there. <laughs> um, but I I love it. I mean, I'm all about the bitterness. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what I'm tasting, other than hops. It is very, it is for sure a double IPA. It's very mm-hmm. hoppy. It's very very hoppy. I um can't describe a taste because. All I taste is hops. <laughs> I'm kind of at the same point with and, you, Alec. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not. I know there's something like I'm tasting something else, but like I can't really discern it because there's so much hops. Like um, normally, like when when I'm used to like a hoppy beer, like I'm used to like plenty of the elder, and um, that is just basically you know just hops. But it's kind of like you, it's they're usually pretty fresh out of the. Um, they're fresh brews, I guess. Um, so like it's a pretty um, open and light bitterness. This one is kind of a, a more condensed hoppy flavor. Well, it's definitely bold. It is sticking true mm-hmm. to what it says on the label. Um, you guys don't get any like the citrus. Um, I definitely get orange for sure. I get the citrus from the smell, not from the taste. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, I don't really drink IPAs that much. So my palate is not accustomed to drinking this. So for me, um, like I'm really just getting the bitter hops. Um, Mm -hmm. I do have to say though, the color is it's, it's a really nice color. It's like an Amber. 
It's a yeah, really pretty looking beer. Amber. Yeah. Yeah. And the like the foam <clears throat> the head is like a it's not white, it's like an off white. So it's actually like really pleasing when you pour it out. Um it's not yeah, like I agree. it's not like those beers where you pour it out and it's like a you know, like that light yellow color and then the head disappears super fast, so it looks like you just got a fucking cup of piss or something. <laughs> it's not like one of those, which is nice, so Yeah. What I do like um about this beer is that when you drink drink it from a glass, um, the the head has a lot of has a lot of legs, like it's mm-hmm. sticking to the to the side of the glass. Oh yeah, it's it doesn't sink at all. It just there it is. <laughs> it's just stuck. I'm gonna try and taste this again. What do you guys think about its drinkability? I mean, I I love it, but like we said, I love IPAs. I, you guys maybe not as much because can you see yourselves drinking it or? If I wanted to get drunk pretty quickly with um, a lot of alcohol, then I would I wouldn't mind drinking this. It's not it's not terrible, but um, in terms of uh, like the flavor complexity, I don't I don't really get anything other than than like condensed bitter hops. Yeah, I, I get that. Its drinkability for me is rather low. I don't like IPA, and this is too bitter for me. I'm just. I'm suffering through each sip, trying to figure out what else I taste and stuff like that. So for me, I can't do it. I just can't. <laughs> I right, mean, um, in well, terms of an IPA, like Rolando said, it, if you're trying to get drunk, it's good. It smells good. And then if you like hops, then this is your beer for sure. Yeah. So now that we've kind of got our first impressions out of the way, um, let's review this bad boy. So, uh, Drew, why don't you start us off since this is the beer you picked? Uh, for me, I'm going to give it a higher marking than you guys for sure. I, um, it's, it's one of the better IPAs I've had. Um, I've not had it before, but it's, it's different for me. Um, like I said, I like all the citrus in it. I, I definitely get the hops. Um, the color and the smell is beautiful and I, I, you know, we're getting all these legs on here, which is super awesome. I'm going to give it a a four and a half out of five for sure. Good, super good beer. Definitely, um, buy it again. Well, that's cool. good. You picked one you like. <laughs> <laughs> Alec, what do you think? <clears throat> um, well, I mean, I'm going to I'm going to say this up front like, you know, take it a little bit with a grain of salt cuz there there was a time in my life, oh many moons ago, that I uh, enjoyed sitting down with a nice IPA, but my taste buds have long since passed through that era. And uh, so for me, um, the color is nice. The just, you know, from from the color of the beer to the color of the head, the the look it has in the glass with the slight fizziness coming up from the bottom is is you know appealing as well the smell like any other ipa is is great they always smell you know floral and amazing and then i taste it and it's nothing like the smell <laughs> and it's it's just bitter so for me like <clears throat> if as an ipa goes um i think it you know it it hits what it's trying to do um, so for that, I'm going to give it a better rating than if it were personal preference. If I'm going to rate it just on like an IPA getting itself done, I'll say it's like a three, three and a half personal preference. It's like a two. I'm, I can't, I, I won't buy this again. Not, not until I get some lighter IPAs, but uh, on my own, no, I'm not buying this again. That's, that's can't. fair, dude. I, fair. I wanted to torture you with this pick cause I, I know you're not a fan. <laughs> Thank you. I I appreciate it so much. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. That's good to hear differing opinions. Um personally, um I agree with both of you. It's got a nice color. It's got a great smell. Um I do enjoy the fact that uh there like you there's a lot of head retention and it's kind of cool like having a beer that just like just constantly looks like it was freshly poured, you know. Mm-hmm. Um in terms of flavor complexity, I already said I don't think there's too much here other than condensed hops. Um, that might just be my palate. But um, in terms of IPAs, this isn't the worst IPA I've had. It's actually very drinkable, in my opinion. Um, so in terms of rating, I would probably give this like a three and a half. Um, it's... It's an easy beer to drink, in my opinion, um, but in terms of 
like what I want to get out of a beer. Like there's not much going on here other than hops. Um, so yeah, three and a half kind of is where I'm sitting. That's fair boys. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad, glad at least you tried it, Alec. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'll, I'll finish my glass. I'm not going to finish all 32 ounces. That's, <laughs> that's like, that's, that's, a, that's huge... a lot of beer too. That's a lot of a 9.25% beer. Like that's so, a lot of beer. <laughs> so what you're telling me is you don't want to get shipwrecked, dude. No, I, I no. don't want to get <laughs> shipwrecked. I don't like right now he's on a boat in the middle of, in the middle of the ocean with this beer. And they had to double IPA it because he's going fucking far away. Yeah, I'm going and real far. He, he's right. He's a prisoner on the ship. Yeah. Well, at least he won't get scurvy, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, he just yeah. pours it all over himself. He's not going to drink it. No. <laughs> it's what I shower with. <laughs> you'll smell. You'll smell very floral. Yeah, no, it's for the ladies. For when I land, it's for the ladies. They're like, wow, you smell so clean. Everyone else stinks. I'm like, ah, yes, I know. Yeah, they love it. <laughs> but why are wow, you, you sticky? you have no infection on you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have all these cuts, but they're all clean. Uh, yeah, you know, immune system, bro. <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, uh, now that we've finished talking about the mission shipwrecked double fucking ipa um (laughs) let's move on to our main anime topics for today so today we will be talking about soccer quest episode two and attack on titan episode three um so let's start it off with uh attack on titan this week in particular um what we see in this episode is the actual source of the titans is coming into question so Drew, do you want to start us off on this? Yeah, uh, first off, you know, episode named Southwestward. Um, <clears throat> we start with Connie's village being destroyed uh, with no survivors, uh, but we find it's kind of weird. There's no bodies. Did everybody escape? You know, what's what's going on with everybody? Um, and one thing that really stood out for me was that, like, female Titan that was hanging out on Connie's house with the short mm-hmm. limbs and the ribs exposed and whatever. She had the same colored eyes as Connie. And it's like, when people become Titans, do they forget? Like, do the uh, human characters forget about the person? Because it's like, it was on his house. Maybe it was his mom or something. But because she became a Titan, he can't remember. That was kind of the vibe that I was getting from it. And Jumping back from uh, last week, we talked about the little girl in the house um, with the short Titan munching on her uh, mom or whatever. Um, She had the same colored eyes as uh, that Titan. So it's like, are they related there? What's up with the eyes? Um, We're getting a lot of a lot of like eye color imagery sort of sort of deals. Uh, It's kind of kind of interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And both had like different. They had different like body variations compared to the normal Titans we see, right? Right, Because like like, she was stuck in the house and couldn't get up. Mm -hmm. Well, and and uh, maybe maybe her transformation went wrong. Um, We've seen that when Aaron transformed for the first time, he could only like make an arm and like some bones and like a little bit of muscle. So was was that the issue there? And you know, where's the blood? Where's the bodies? There's like a lot of a lot of questions (laughs) going Mm -hmm. on there. Right. And going back to what you said about. it possibly being his mother, Connie like overhears it kind of saying like, welcome home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's like, w- did you hear that? Yeah. That sounded like my mom. And so you're like, whoa, what mm-hmm. the is what's going on? Like, where did these Titans come from? And especially because we find out that like later in the episode, they can't find a wall or a hole in the wall. Yeah. Right, right. And your your boy your boy Reiner was there too, acting suspicious as fuck. And you're like, <laughs> what's what's going on, Reiner? Uh, we'll talk about that right. a little bit more later too, like him and uh, Ymir being kind of sketchy. But uh, we can get to that in a little bit. Yeah. Something has to be going on with like people transforming and stuff like that, though, because a bunch of uh, Titans came from the south and then they searched the wall for like. A- a long time and they didn't find a hole and then all these people who look like people's you know family members and stuff like that are popping up so is there like some sort of like epidemic or are they you know is the 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 church or the government are they like turning people into into titans or something that's kind of what i was thinking i was like are they is that like part of their plot or whatever to to um 
just turn people into titans or something. I don't know. It's just interesting. Right. Yeah. Going along on that idea um, about you mentioned the church, Alec. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about the discussion that Pastor Nick has with the group, with Aaron, Mikasa, all of them? When he mentions somebody, he doesn't name a character, but they do describe Krista. What do you think? I, I, that's who I was thinking of when he, when they described her. And so, and then that brought me back to that conversation she had with, um, what's that girl's name? The, um, Ymir. Yeah. Ymir. Um, the conversation she had with her where it was like, why are you trying to like protect me and all that stuff? And, uh, and then she, uh, she says she only did it for herself. And then the face she's like, okay, good. I'm glad. But the face she made was like, like a fake smile, fake happy smile or something like that. And it was super suspicious. So after that conversation, I was like, what's up with this girl? So that's kind of, you know, where I'm at. I don't don't really know what they're going to go with on that. What do you guys think about it? Well, I was, I was pissed that, you know, Sasha interrupts my boy, Pastor Nick. And (laughs) I just, I I can't stand this character. And then again, they have to go back to the potato and it's just like, can can we give it up? Like, can we, can she be eaten already? Like, let's, let's let's get over. I mean, she did eat, but let's, let's get her eaten. Let's get her out of the picture. (laughs) Um, but yeah, you know, the super interesting stuff uh, going forward. It's like, what what's going to happen with Krista? Um, and then as that kind of conversation with Pastor Nick uh, subsides, we get a flash over to uh, the 104 um, getting attacked by the Titans um, mm-hmm. with uh, the Beast Titan and whatnot. But what I wanted to point out was... Um, Reiner and Ymir have this like short little conversation and he's holding something that looks like a golden harmonica something along those yeah, lines. He's holding something. He, he's holding something. And then right after that happens, these Titans start attacking. It's like, did he summon them? It's like he, he was, he wasn't shocked either. Like when they all started attacking him, uh, Ymir and, uh, Bertold, they were all like at the top of the tower after, um, that little scene happened. And it's like, they knew, <laughs> that all these guys were like going to show up um especially when they see the beast titan they all kind of like look at each at each other they're like oh shit like what did what did we do you know that i got that kind of vibe from it i must have i must have blinked or something because i didn't see the the golden harmonica was it a sh- quick show of, it was of fast that? it was it okay. was, super it was quick. quick almost it was like, like looked away yeah it, what happened was so you, they flash over to there's this utgard castle Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. that's the ruins they're in mm-hmm. and basically it cuts to the 104 and Reiner is like looking at Amir and it's just like Amir what the fuck essentially and he's holding this thing and then the, in- the Titans come and interrupt them mm-hmm. okay. I thought it was pretty interesting this specific scene because you've got the Beast Titan showing up but he I kind of feel like the Beast Titan summoned these titans that they're not supposed to be awake and moving at night but they're attacking these ruins and so the the 104 remnants are getting distracted they have to fight these titans and he just scales the wall and climbs over so i'm I, i have this feeling that he used that as a distraction so that he can do whatever the fuck he's doing like i don't know what the fuck he's trying to trying to do what, over there what was interesting too was a lot of those titans that started attacking the castle were the same ones that were with him the first time we see him yeah we see that little weird looking fuck uh, yeah the one who was chomping down on yeah we yeah. see him we see like our uh, yuri on ice guy who likes to like disco <laughs> dance and sprint he was there there's you hey know, there guys was a, there, was a, <laughs> there was a there was a couple of different ones uh, that we'd seen before that were there so it's like do they just always chill with him or can he summon them you know what's what's going on with that. Yeah, and they they can move at night, so I w- maybe he has like a specific group of titans with him that can just move at night. Are they like his creations or something yeah. like that? Is mm-hmm. he, you know, making new titans or something? And then I also was surprised because he scaled the wall, and I thought he was bigger than he actually is because he scaled the wall, but he was like you know a quarter of the size of the wall. Right. So he's not even as tall as like the massive titans that broke through the wall earlier, which are mm-hmm. you know a neck and head taller than the wall. So I'm, I was just a little bit surprised by that. Cause I thought he was bigger than, than he actually is in, in this scene at least. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, backtracking a little bit in the episode, we do get pastor Nick seeing the aftermath 
of all mm-hmm. of these evacuations. And so he actually gets to see what it looks like when all this destruction occurs and Titans coming from these walls that he's worshiping basically fuck everything up and all these people are displaced from their homes and are pitiful. And then he kind of gets this realization like, oh, like this is what's happening outside of my little safety bubble. Yeah. Um, it's kind of it's kind of nice to see a character get this like what is it? Uh it's like he like regained his humanity almost. Almost. But it's like, you know, like one of those like aha moments yeah. kinda kinda deal. It it's kinda it was it was funny to to see someone that you in the first episode you just like telling Hanji like yeah throw him off yeah get a little bit of redemption because he does help the group by telling them about Krista yeah in whatever way that's gonna help the group (laughs) yeah whatever however that helps them well and if that certain special character didn't interrupt him maybe we would have uh, found out (laughs) a little bit more (laughs) I I might be just a a little bit jaded no I'm sure I'm sure (laughs) (laughs) I'm curious though as to uh, the report that she brought I'm, I'm wondering you know what's what's in there yeah, because right. she brought it from the, like, a captain or something, right? Yeah, it was whatever the captain that was in charge of their group, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and the one that was it, it, might, it might have uh, some information, too, about her village and stuff, because she was hanging out with the, the village and stuff like that. It, yeah. it might be a correspondence with them. Um, you know, we don't, we don't know. Right. It's it's going to be interesting once like a lot of this comes to light. It, either they're going to do it gradually or there's just going to be one episode and it's going to be like, boom, like all this stuff's going to happen. I kind of hope it's like one big episode because that would be really exciting. But it's just well, looking looking yeah. forward, you know, we get a little bit of Reiner's past um, and I'm super, super curious to see, you know, a little bit more about him and learn a little bit more about him because of all the shady shit that he's been doing um these past few episodes it's like Mm -hmm. maybe we get some uh, some light with his backstory and stuff like that so right the last uh, shot they give us in the preview of the next episode which is called soldier is um reiner is looking at his hand and it looks like he's gonna bite it kind of like what aaron does to Mm -hmm. trigger his titan transformation so i'm wondering if this is going to be the reveal you know Maybe we'll get like a full, this is what they're going to do. We're going to get a full episode of a uh, flashback of Reiner. And then at the very end, he's going to transform. And then we're going to be like, oh, shit. Oh, like, yeah, I'm sure. That's, call that's call it, calling it now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's looking like that's going to be it. Yeah. But, um, uh, better right, episode any, this week for sure. Yeah. Any last points on Attack on Titan episode three? No, I just got to say, I kind of like that they're giving backstory to all these other characters as well. Like now a lot more than because before they were all kind of mysteries, but they were still like around doing stuff. So it's nice. It's nice to get more character development on more people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, now that we're done talking about Attack on Titan, let's move on to the Soccer Quest episode two. Um, In particular, this episode has a lot of camaraderie. Um, Mm -hmm. They're gathering the five champions as the episode is titled. (laughs) So, uh, Alec, what did you think about episode two? Um, I liked it. Uh, I, I've really liked both episodes so far, but, um, this one, it was, you know, it was cool. She's, you kind of see her getting perspective on her idea that Tokyo is the best place, you know, and everyone belongs there because there's all these people that she's meeting. There's well, two, I believe, um, they're from Tokyo and they moved to this tiny town and she's from a tiny town trying to escape it. And, but she keeps seeing these people who like live there and work there. And it's just interesting to, to see how she's getting that perspective. And her mind seems to be kind of like changing, not necessarily, but like wavering, you know, and she, she kind of seems unsure by the end of the episode, what exactly she wants to do, but she's still kind of holding fast to her. Tokyo's amazing and has everything idea. Mm -hmm. Um, that, so that was, you know, cool to see but otherwise i thought it was funny the episode had its you know its funny moments and how they're trying to set up the stand and she's in her little costume and and they had the idea oh just just make her apologize (laughs) i'm sorry i ruined everything and and no one still showed up and they're like but we made her say sorry so i i thought it was pretty funny drew what did you think it was good um kind of going off of what you said you know um she's she's seeing 
through her her newfound friends that it's it's kind of difficult to to make that life in Tokyo and that's why they kind of left. We have Maki, um she was a detective on a former TV show in Tokyo but she left. We also have who I'm considering the best girl now, uh, Sane, who um you know, she's a computer IT specialist um who was trying to get away from it all, got burnt out in Tokyo. Um so I I I like to see the development uh, through that. Uh, we also see that, um, you know, she keeps getting conned into, you know, first it's, you know, I'll stay one day and then now I'll stay one week to sell these manju. And now it's like, oh, I'm actually going to stay three weeks uh, to wait till the uh, Sakura cherry blossoms uh, bloom um, to hang out with you guys. So she's kind of getting roped along into this. Um, but I still think from the first episode, her mind was made up that she was going to stay. Um she saw that picture and that just was like, I, I need to be here. It's fate that I'm here. Um, so she's going to kind of stick it out. Um, I, I really, I really am like Alex said, I'm really enjoying this show. Um, it's lighthearted. It's fun. Um, all the girls are pretty good. Um, and now we have light on every single one. You know, I talked about Maki and, uh, Sane. We also have, um, Ruri, um, who is kind of the shut in, but you know, still cute. Um, so we have, you know, all these different tropes represented and they're all, they're all good in their own way. Cool. Um, going back to, uh, Ririko. Um, she's introduced um, by Yoshino and to Yoshino by Shiori and she's kind of introduced as like this shut-in girl like you said and she's the one that kind of shows them the origins for the word chupacabra which clearly did not originate in Japan yeah now 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 we know for sure in the anime canon that the there's no random chupacabra in Japan and that Japan is not part of Latin America. They don't need um, to worry about goats getting, you know, their goats. Their sorry, goats can you say that again? I didn't hear. They, they don't need to worry about their goats. They're safe. Oh, yeah, the goats. <laughs> um, so going, going back to these characters, they do make a, like a video for this last like attempt to sell these manju. Um, what do you think about how the commercial they made turned out for the website. Uh, <laughs> it's like one of those things that <clears throat> I saw an ad or a commercial on, on TV the other day for like this uh, video game store. And it was made by the people in the store clearly with like a video camera that they just had at home. And it, that's kind of the vibe I got from, from the commercial that they made. It's like, you know, really just like the home video kind of thing. And I feel like it'll draw some people who are just like, what is this? You know, but it, right. it'll be, it, I've, maybe it'll go viral in the show. That would be kind of funny. It's the kind of video that you could see like going viral. Like, Oh, this is hilarious. It's so bad, but mm -hmm. it's funny. So, and the best, the best thing about this video. So there's, there's a Japanese pun that probably gets lost on a bunch of people um, because they didn't really represent it very well in the, in the translation, but uh, at the end, there they she def Yoshino defeats the chupacabra, and he goes, "Oh no, the chupacabra is turned into um, turned into manju," which like the way they say it, it's like a play on words. Mm -hmm. So they they say the chupacabra, the maju, is, which is like the word for beast monster in Japanese became manju so they added a little n syllable in there to make to make it a dessert so it was kind of a play on words that was kind of funny <laughs> i didn't catch that but i don't speak japanese so that <laughs> makes sense <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's why i was like oh man they kind of lost it like usually um crunchy is pretty good at translating like these little one-off like lines into some sort of weird colloquial thing but i guess it's kind of a hard one to to go about like how would you do that yeah i was about yeah. to say like i'm not sure how i would exactly go about trying to subtitle that and be like mm, how do we make this go like point get across that's why um, um a lot of the monogatari stuff is hard to translate um yeah. and why it takes so long it's just too too um heavily rooted in the language um and it's hard to come across as something clever so they they do their best but <laughs> sometimes it's hard one other part of this episode that I thought it was pretty funny was they were at Sanaya's place trying to recruit her to make their website. And um, 
she's freaking out because there's a centipede crawling around her room. Mm -hmm. Um, And Alec, I know you watched uh, Bokuro Wamina Kawaiso. Yeah, I was about to say that. (laughs) It was that reminded me of that so much because if you remember from from that show, Sayaka is like from the country. Mm -hmm. And so and so like they're all freaking out because there's a centipede crawling around um, and she just like walks up, just takes a pair of chopsticks, picks it up and like throws it out. Yeah. And that's basically what, what, uh, Shiori does in here. And it's just like, they're all like, what? These, like, these city, <laughs> city girls. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like freaking out. And she just slowly walks over, grabs chopsticks out of the girl's cup noodles. And then it goes bloop. And they just look at her like, and she's like, what the hell is wrong with you people? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was just like uh, it was like the other anime. In the other one, she picks up, puts it in a bag, and then walks out of the room <laughs> while the other girl's like screaming. <laughs> it, 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 that reminded me of that. That was a good anime it too. Funny. They need another yeah. season. <laughs> it does. Um, so, moving on, uh, the next episode is called "The Cry of the Mandrake," and it kind of looks like Yoshino's here for good. Drew, do you have any thoughts on this? No, just uh, looking forward to the next one. Um, not a ton to talk about uh, with these types of anime. It's just, you know, cute, fun, lighthearted stuff. And uh, I'm just looking forward to see more development um, for all the girls. Um, like I said, I really like uh, Sanai as uh, well as uh, Ruri. I'm hoping that we get some more development on uh, both of them. Cool. All right. So um, that ends this week's pairing. So let's move on to happy hour. Um, so Alec, your shows finally came out this week. Yes, they what did. did uh, <laughs> what did you watch and what did you think? Uh, I watched, uh, I can't, I don't remember the whole, whole name, but I keep seeing it on the internet as zero, uh, no show They're They're calling it grimoire or grimoire of zero, Something I believe. Weird. And, uh, yeah. and I also watched sword oratorio, which is like Dan Machi spinoff, uh, season two sort of but not about hestia it's about uh ice wallen wallenstein or whatever um <laughs> so i'll just I'll, I'll quickly talk about them really quick the first one i watched was a uh, zero no show that anime actually looks really promising um the first episode entertained me pretty well it started out you know talking about the witch hunts they have going on and uh and just at, like the church is, is spearheading it kind of and and then it kind of cuts to this this uh this like white with black stripes tiger. It looks like a, you know, he looks like a tiger that, that you'd see in that magic show in Vegas. I forget which one, but, um, Oh, the, what are they? The, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The, that one. So anyways, that one. Um, and so it's, um, it, it cuts to a guy that looks like, um, he, he looks like that and he's, they call him like a, a beast fallen, I believe. And, and like, he's, he's running away from a witch and uh, and then he runs into another witch who, uh, you know, spoilers, if you haven't watched it, it turns out to be zero. Um, that's her name. And uh, she can do magic and she's like super powerful. And there, there were a couple of really funny moments in it, as well as some serious ones, because first he runs into that first witch and then he runs into zero who stops the first witch. And then he uh, <laughs> she's like, I'm a witch, but he like spilled her soup. And so he's like, wait, are you a witch? And she's like, yeah, but you owe me soup. And then they cut to him and he's just sprinting away from her, just out of the forest. Like, dude, this is just like, get me away from her. And so she ends up like chasing after him and, and trying to steal his soup. And it, it seems it's going to be like an adventure between the, the two of them, you know, with this pact that they created. But from, from the looks of it, it looks like it's going to be like pretty funny. It's going to have good action and it'll have some, seems like it'll have some good serious points as well. So, it looks really promising to me. Um, cool. Did did you either of you guys uh, check it out? I checked it out. Um, I I liked uh, the setting and the characters. Mm-hmm. It's I I usually tend to watch these kinds of shows where like it's like kind of like an old fantasy setting, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I I enjoyed the first episode. It was uh, it was entertaining. Yeah, I'm getting kind of sick of fantasy anime, so I think I'm gonna skip this one. <laughs> Um, but if it, if it ends up being promising, I might, I might pick it up later. Cool. Um, the other one I watched sword oratoria, it's, uh, it follows I, uh, what is it? Ice, ice, Valenstein, mm-hmm. ice. Wall- Wallenstein. Um, it, like basically the way the episode goes is 
she's going through a dungeon with her group of strong adventurers and um, <clears throat> they're trying to go down the floors and they get overrun by these weird new breed of monsters that they find, which then makes them have to leave. And by the end of the episode, basically it cuts to where she saved bell from the actual, you know, the, the first, the real season of uh, Don Machi. And mm-hmm. uh, it's like, cause they were leaving to, they were um, leaving the safe area to leave the dungeon. <clears throat> they actually got overrun in the safe area and they're leaving and they get attacked by all these minotaurs and the two sisters, the, the two, the one with the big boobs and the flat girl, um, mm-hmm. they go and they like kill two minotaurs and the minotaurs are like, ah, and they run away and they start running up floors. And so, um, that's when, uh, bell gets like attacked by the minotaur and he, and she saves him. And then that's where the episode ends. So it kind of ends right where, you know, near the beginning of the, the first one. So I think they're all part of uh, Loki's guild. Um, if you haven't seen the uh, the original series, um, there's different guilds based on um, mythological gods. So Hestia, Hestia is obviously a uh, um, a mythological a god in, in in Greek culture. Um, so she's she's one of the goddesses. But then uh, Loki, who is portrayed by a female in this anime, uh, houses uh, eyes and those uh, those other two characters. I can't remember their names, but. Um, so I don't remember the names. I don't remember the names. I haven't either. seen this episode either. So <laughs> uh, I, I would tell you, but I I'm terrible at remembering names of just. I that's why I always give everyone nicknames like Orishura, silver haired bitch. Um, <laughs> I, I'll remember things like burning pudding princess just because that's hilarious, but I won't right. remember names. It's a, a good way to keep track of them is by hair color. You know, if somebody has uh, a specific hair color or style that they're important, right? Yeah, if it's different. It's not brown hair, then right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, what do you think of these two shows? Are either of them promising to be covered by the whole group? Um, well, I think if I had to choose between the two, um, we probably all are going to watch Sword Oratoria, so that's easier for us to cover. But I do think that um, Grimoire of Zero is actually re- going to be really promising. It looks like it's got a cute grill, a cool like tiger dude. And, and like the the setting, um, like it's medieval. It's got magic. It's got action. It's got serious. It's got funny. So it, it looks like it's going to be good. But um, Sword Oratoria is, looks like it's going to be really good as well. From what I saw, I was actually it kind of kept the same feel as the 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 real the original uh, season. So. As long as it's not a ton of recap, I think it will be good. But um, we'll yeah. see as it yeah. moves forward. Cool. Well, uh, Drew, what did what about your shows? Uh, so like we mentioned last week, I'm watching um, Reinai Bokun and uh, Aromanga Sensei. I'll start with uh, Reinai Bokun. Um, I love reading the titles of, the, of this show. The Episode 2 is entitled Sniff Sniff X, The Only One Who May Hurt Seiji Kun, dot dot dot, is me. Um, <laughs> so again, another another crazy title. Um Basically, a, a, another another funny episode. Um, they kind of slow down on uh, the original tropes that they introduced. Like uh, the Andre was present, but it wasn't as like in your face, um, you know, and overbearing as it was starting to become in the first episode. Um, we also meet a couple new characters. Uh, we meet the protagonist's uh, sister. Um, we don't really get a name for her, but she's, you know, Baka Onichan, like, you know, <laughs> super sundere. Um, so she's probably going to get crossed up, uh, in the mix with the, uh, the note, the, uh, kiss note. Um, and then, you know, we have a, a little bit of a story in this episode. There's a teacher and a, um, uh, class representative who um, basically are in love with each other and the uh, the gang is trying to interfere and they're, let's just write their names it'll be better and they're like no let's not interfere um, let's see you know let's actually talk to him about it and we get a bunch of hijinks um, the blonde haired girl who I can't remember her name and Guri who is uh, Cupid you know get basically kidnapped by two robbers um, some yandere shit happens um, and the two the the teacher and the um, class representative who were always going to be together but you know we find out more about them and they're like yeah we were just waiting until you know we're not teacher and student anymore it's like done the end um, so decent decent episode um, 
we'll we'll see moving forward uh, it's starting to lose my interest but um i'll keep with it um we'll see where it goes but i like the definitely. cupid character uh she's, she she's good she's she she, she makes favorite. it funny and she kind of yeah. brings everybody together but um i can see it like i said i can see it getting old I like the way they change her, like how they animate her when she's like, oh, I didn't know. They make her like bald with one hair sticking out. And see, and I, I, I don't really like that. I think oh, that's, really? a cop, I, that's a cop out and that's boring. Um, I, I actually like the art style because no, they, they don't, um, they don't uh, outline people in black. They outline them in like different colors. And I, I like when uh, animes do that. But when they draw her like that, it's just like, it's why, why are you doing it's just, that? It's just funny because it, it just adds to the what line she's saying for me. I'm just so just yeah, I, I, I get I get why people would like it, but for me, it's it's just it's like a cop out. So not not my favorite. I personally liked uh, how uh, what's the yon, yonder chick's name again? Akane. Akane. Yeah, I liked how she she wasn't as present in this episode as she was in the first episode mm-hmm. because when when she's not doing the same antic the whole time it's funnier when it when it appears you know i agree mm-hmm. I definitely because it's agree. like when you when when something's gone for a while and it comes back then you kind of get the enjoyment from it again kind of so like when she man. showed up yeah when she showed up again at the end of the episode it was funnier to me than mm-hmm. like her antics at the end of episode one yeah yeah i, I definitely agree the bank robbery is where the name of the episode came from where they they tried to shoot the blonde girl oh, and he yeah. like dove in front of her and it scraped him and she's like nobody hurts him but me and then she started kicking their asses mm. um, and then then you know the knives came out again but it <laughs> she's was like, funny this time gun in half you know, yeah like, she, <laughs> and she's uh, just I, like be, she's like beating the shit out of him the police are like stop please yeah yeah the, their their reactions in the back they're like shaking like no please don't do that <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to arrest you <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah right. like i said you know de- decent um i'm curious to see where they go with it but i hope it, it doesn't overstay its welcome and i also i also really like the op the op is fun and catchy so that's mm-hmm. that's nice mm-hmm. to see uh the second one i watched uh was Arrow manga sensei um episode two entitled class rep with a normie life and a fearless fairy so we get this interesting character that shows up. Um, the class representative made Megumin, <laughs> aka um, Megumi. So you know, a couple pullovers from last season uh, with Masamune, and then now Megumin, which is an interesting <laughs> name for sure. Um, a couple of notes I wrote about her: she's a pouty bitch, totally <laughs> clueless, and she loves dick. And she loves dicks. Like, oh yeah, she loves I, dick. I guess that's a thing, uh, <laughs> for for dick. middle schoolers, but you know. <laughs> Um, oh, you God. know, and so she, she invites herself in basically, um, a bunch of hijinks happen. Sigiri, uh, the little sister, AKA Aromanga sensei throws a tantrum and be like, why is this bitch here? I don't want to go to school. Blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, in, we have the class rep kind of throwing herself at the uh, protagonist Masamune, being in order to try to get uh, Sigiri to go back to class and stuff. So, we talked about this a little bit earlier, and this show definitely has an uh, Oriimo vibe, and the internet is a buzz about it. it. Just like when Oriimo started, everybody was all on the Kirino train. It's like, oh, Kirino's the best. You know, Ugh. she's so cool. And then we got that ending, and it was just like crushed people. And they're like, really? This is how you're gonna you're gonna end that anime? Um, now I I see on the internet, you know, Sigiri's so much better than Kirino, like blah blah blah, all this stuff. So I I definitely get the Oriimo vibe from this. Um, that's I think what we're gonna get moving forward. We can see the harem kind of forming. You know, we have this class rep now. Um, we have uh, what's her name, Yamada Elf Sensei, okay. aka the uh, the rival, the, ri- the for, rival for. Uh, yeah, the 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 rival for the uh, the the writers because um, Masamune, you know, he's he's trying to be this light novel artist or uh, writer. Um, so he wants to the harem- illustrator, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. That was the main uh, conflict this episode. And then uh, who is the other girl? The girl who works in the bookstore. So w- the harem's forming. It's it's starting to begin. We have you know four or five eligible young ladies for uh, this Masamune kid, and uh, we'll see he if he's up for the task. <laughs> He's not. One, yeah. One, one big difference is, is uh, in this show specifically, um, it's clear that Sagiri kind of has this thing for Masamune 
whereas like Kirino is just like super sundere mm. and basically mostly a bitch not basically most of the time a bitch all the time a bitch she was all the time a bitch. bitch yeah you know what yeah you're right all the time <laughs> <laughs> but yeah overall you know a good a good episode um i love the op i love claris um even if it's not the original members i still love it um and you know we'll see it is what it we'll is. See, yeah <laughs> we'll see we'll see what happens next week um i think i think this is one that we should maybe consider covering full time because the internet is in, in love with sagiti even though she might end up being a bitch like kirino but i don't think so you know, we'll we'll see i i think she has more redeeming qualities um i think she does actually like the protagonist um you can see the signs but you know they're who, also not really related <laughs> exactly exactly there's no, it, there's unlike, no <laughs> unlike orihimo <laughs> there's no bullshit we're like well japanese law says like no just just <laughs> no just stop don't like, don't, don't pull that I don't want to end with my brother and sister getting married in a wedding chapel. Yeah, you know, little little weird. sisters are great, but we're not marrying them. We're we're <laughs> loving and nurturing them. <laughs> not <laughs> at least literally, we're not, not literally loving them. <laughs> at, at least at least if we're related to them, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, the shows I covered this week, obviously the same as last week: Sai Kano season two and Sakurada Reset. So, Saikano season two, the f- official first episode, not uh, fan service episode zero. Um, the show is this episode covers the the first encounter between two of the the heroines. So there's Utaha and Eri, and they're both always at odds with each other because they both clearly like the main character Tomoya and they're both kind of like successful in their own fields. So Utaha is a light novel writer and, uh, Eri is a doujin artist, uh, specifically erotic doujin, which is kind of weird. And which we find out in this episode, she's been doing since, uh, show which is, essentially like it's year two in elementary so that's essentially second grade that's kind of weird for someone drawing to be drawing erotic images are you Um, are you sure this is an aromanga sensei (laughs) i know right (laughs) um and uh and so like we kind of like get from this backstory that the two of them respect each other and like their works but they're too proud um in their quest for tomio's heart to kind of acknowledge each other so basically, they just cover all this stuff. A lot of the stuff that gets like kind of brushed over is like um, Eri's backstory with Tomia, which is covered in one of the spin-off manga, um, Egoistic Lily, um, which I happen to have read uh, after season one. So it was kind of nice to see that they're kind of throwing in little hints and Easter eggs to stuff. Um, basically, these two characters are like your typical tropes from like a visual novel. Um, Aries, this blonde, half English, um, Sundara character with twin tails. And of course, because of that, she's flat chested. And on top of that, she's his childhood friend. So that just all these things like mixed into <laughs> one into my opinion, she's kind of annoying, but <laughs> that's just my opinion of those types of characters. Um, not like, all the time but like she just kind of grates at you a little bit and then utaha is kind of this the sadistic manipulative she's like this yamato nadeshko you know like the ideal like beautiful japanese woman or whatever and she's like the senpai character so she's what i would have view as the more popular type in in like the in like the the community i would say i'm not sure i don't know I'm just spouting out my own my own opinions. Um, but we get their backstory. They're both clearly based on a lot of tropes in uh, in this genre, which is kind of funny because it's a, it's a rom-com that kind of pokes fun at the genre as well. And um, one last thing to note about that is like the episode ends and like they end up getting each other's autographs because they're technically fans of each other. They're just too proud 
to say it. Um, did, did we figure out um, the flat symbol or? <laughs> I I don't know. Like they, it is titled Sinai Heroin no Sodate Kata flat. I don't know if there's going to be any significance to it. I'm assuming they thought like, oh, B, it looks like a B. So it's like season one is A, this is B. If it does cover more of the music aspect from like the cousin that's helping make the music for it, then I guess it would make more sense. But so far, we don't know. For sure. Um, okay, it's just so, a third season of a sound euphonium in actuality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I mean, I personally <clears throat> think it's a really good show. Um, I, I think that both of you would like it if you were willing to watch through the first season of it. Um, the director, I looked this up, but the director of the of this series actually was the director for Orishura. Oh, so okay. um, that's like it, you guys both like that show. So you may find enjoyment in this show. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, I don't know. Sakurada Reset is the other show I was I was watching. And in episode two titled Memory in Children, part two of three. I don't know if you finished the first episode, Alec, so if I, I maybe did I you finished see this both. Mm-hmm, yeah, it's a okay, real big one. So, it's yeah. kind of a bomb. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff. I have a lot of notes written, but I'm just going to kind of gloss over what the plot is. So basically, there's the little girl that Haruki is interested in helping, and she's basically a clone of her mother's stillborn child that was created because her mother really desired her child what the to fuck? be alive. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot to it. This is just like super, mm-hmm. super condensed. But yeah, it would take a, yeah. a like a couple minutes to go through everything they said. <laughs> but Jesus this is Christ. a super condensed version. Yeah. And so what they're trying to prevent with their powers is having is this child being abandoned. So mm-hmm. It, what happens at first is the mother leaves the town and when you leave the town, you forget about your power. So you essentially can't use it anymore. Mm-hmm. And so the bureau that's governing these powers in this, in the, in the area, the town, whatever they view the power to spontaneously generate life as a very troublesome ability, which I can see why. Um, and so they, convince her to leave and so this child gets abandoned and is essentially going to be put up to like foster homes and and all that so they don't haruki and k don't want this to happen so what happens is they go through all this like beating around the bush they have to like recruit different characters to get their powers to do all of it but essentially what happens in the end is they use his power with the student council president's power to share abilities with other people with the mother so that she's able to remember the moment she created the clone of her her dead daughter um and so she could remember like oh like yes i really do love her because she's still her daughter you know like regardless of the fact that she was created with her power that is her daughter and um they use another guy's power that can transmit what people are saying directly to another person. They use it to have the daughter say like, mommy, I love you. I don't want to, I don't want you to leave that kind of stuff. And then like she breaks down and she, she, yeah, she breaks down, but like she comes to her senses and gets back, goes back, lives with her daughter again. Um, and convoluted as fuck. (laughs) There is a lot to watch. Uh, You have to, you have to watch it. It's it's this is the show I'm gonna personally recommend that we that we cover. It's there's a lot to it. There's a there's a lot of philosophical stuff to it too. Like they talk about the three laws of robotics and how that compares to Haruki. But like in my personal opinion, like it it is more of a thing that we can look into K's character because I feel like he's more robotic than Haruki is and I have a lot to say about that but there's not there's too much to say I don't want to <laughs> yeah. I don't want to drag on and on about it we but could go a, another 10 minutes on this show Honestly, on this episode alone 
it, it's there's it's, so much going on yeah, and i'll have to check it out then it's it, it sounds interesting it sounds like kind of like a modern day ghost in the shell a little bit um i don't know if it centers on bit. like the the feminine themes as much but you know maybe the robotics and the uh transplanting of human clone bullshit i don't know <laughs> right um but yeah i don't want to drag too on or drag on too much about this sorry i'm getting a little drunk um <laughs> Uh, so would you say you're shipwrecked? I'm, get, <laughs> oh, I'm getting there. I'm, there's a storm coming. I'm <laughs> oh, weathering the storm. Oh, and it's on your, your shaky boat. It's on my shaky boat. Um, so for the last thing we should cover today, why don't we talk about, uh, was it Hanadoki Con that you guys went to today? Yeah, but real yeah. quick, one last thing at risk of any, you know, I'm going to drop the bomb that that one girl dies at the end of the episode. Just throwing that out there. Anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That well, we that's if we cover it, we could discuss. Yeah, no, I just it. wanted to make sure it was out there. <laughs> she dies. All right, dude. And that was a big a, a bomb. So it was a bomb. You need it to watch it. In the, it was hinted at the end of the first episode. It was. But you got to watch it. All right. So, yeah, no, we went to uh, Drew and I went to Hanadoki Con today. It's uh, down in San Diego. Um. So we just checked it out for today. Uh, Saturday is when we went. Um, it was it was pretty cool. It was small. It was it was at a small venue. It was a small con, just a you know a small handful of vendors. Um, it seemed like they had some panels, and then there were there were a good amount of pretty good cosplays out there. Uh, we got some good pictures there. I'm uh, they're going to be posted up on the Twitter. Um, so you know what what do you think, Drew? You liked it? Yeah, it was fun. Um, you know, we were just kind of chilling. Um, we went we went around, uh, didn't really go to very many panels or anything like that. But uh, we walked around, uh, took a ton of pictures. Um, so go check them out on the Twitter. They should be they should be up uh, by the time this gets published. Um, but yeah, overall, you know, good small con. Um, everybody was very nice. Um, I guess if you have a DSLR, everybody will ask you to take their picture, um, which is kind of nice. But uh, other than that, I, I enjoyed myself. I got sunburned. Um, oh, ooh, did you? Uh, yeah, my, my left so arm. White, dude. My uh, left arm is sunburned. It's because yes, the, I'm, I'm we, too we pale. We were chilling at a, a restaurant on the back end of the uh, <clears throat> back end of the the. Um, venue that they were at because that's where they had like cosplay meetings and stuff like that and the umbrella only covered like you you kept having to move right yeah the yeah. as the sun started going down i was like shifting but uh, i was, was inescapable i didn't know <laughs> <laughs> i clearly picked but, uh, the right side <laughs> yeah. but l- uh, let us know what you think of the pictures uh shout out to um everybody who organized the event and stuff like that and shout out to the cosplayers everybody was super chill and awesome so uh hope you hope you enjoy that and if uh, you want to see more of that in the future just let us know um we always love going and hanging out at cons, shooting at cons, all that kind of stuff. So we're definitely going to do some more too. Um, BlizzCon could, uh, this year as well. So BlizzCon, we could also go to was it Anime Expo in in July? Yeah, yeah it's, I, Anime I Expo is huge. So I'm, I, I really want to try to get to go to that. I haven't been in. Last time I went was like years ago, so I don't. I honestly have no idea what the scale is now. <laughs> all right, so um, well, that's. All for this week's episode of Anime on Draft. Um, we hope you enjoyed listening to us ramble on, sing that song, you know. Um, Drunk, drunkily on this uh, drunk. great IPA. I don't care what anybody else uh, says. On our, we're getting shipwrecked this week. I'm not. Um, <laughs> I haven't sipped in a while. <laughs> um, well, if you would like to continue listening to us, please subscribe on iTunes. Just look up Anime on Draft. We are also on Twitter. Handle him at Anime On Draft. On Instagram, we are official at Anime On Draft. And on SoundCloud, you can also look us up at Anime On Draft. We also have a WordPress, animeondraft.wordpress.com. You can find links to all of our social media as well as blog posts containing all of our episodes. And you can click the nice subscribe to iTunes button to subscribe to our podcast. So, that wraps it up for this week's episode. Um, any last words? Please use the WordPress. <laughs> yes, please do. I put work in us <laughs> Again, let us know what you think about uh, those pictures and uh, any feedback you can provide with us is uh, greatly appreciated. Yes, please uh, use um, the WordPress. Give us any feedback that you would like to send and also check out our YouTube channel where we will be posting the podcast up as well. All right. Thank you. See you next time. Later.